Uh, right now, earlier this week, the King's Health continued to make headlines after he returned home following his prostate procedure. But the Queen's niece has also used her platform to speak out about a health issue this week, opening up about her ongoing battle with endometriosis. Yes, now, Dr Samir's here now, but we should remind everyone that this is also going to be the topic of our phone-in today. So, what sort of questions could you help with this morning? So, we know, as I've mentioned before, it's chronically debilitating. So, anyone who's concerned about their symptoms needs to phone in because it is uh, a lot of women are undiagnosed mm -hmm. and that's the issue and the, a lot of the symptoms mimic other conditions so i want women to just call in describing their symptoms and then maybe we could help them with regards to yes. treatments mm. or what pathway they could mm -hmm. take and it might be that once we speak about this now that you say I that want to get sounds in exactly now. like me, so it might be questions. worth watching this too. Well, look, if it does sound like you after we've had this chat, give us a call for free on 08 thousand thirty forty forty four, or scan the QR code on the screen now. You can get involved using our free This Morning app as well, but we need you to get in touch by 11.15 today and you must be 18 or over. So let's start first with why this has made the headlines, because this has really been in the spotlight at the minute, hasn't it? I've got to it? be honest, I know this is very naive. I'd, I'd heard the word endometriosis, I don't know what it was. Did not know what it was. Yeah, yeah. well, I think, I think that's common, and that's the point of this, right? Um, so, Queen Camilla's niece um, has made a really sort of candid public statement about her own health problems. Um, and th should I read some of the things that yeah. she's actually said about endometriosis, which I think is really, really important? It's isolating, agonising and completely unbearable. Every month, I ingest hundreds of, pa uh, hundreds of painkillers, faint, vomit, spend nights and days crouched on the floor crying... This is all followed by intense waves of helplessness and depression. Most women live in this cycle of pain in silence. I'm lucky enough to be operated in a few weeks. Uh, she now becomes one of the very few public voices talking about the condition. We've got Hillary Clinton, Dolly Parton and Emma Bunton. But let's sort of answer, which we should say we really commend them speaking about this because it's yeah, really, really important. But let's answer your question here. What exactly what is, is it? endometriosis. Yeah, so that, that's what everyone has to know. Mm. So we have tissue inside the uterus part of the womb and normally we would shed that every month with a cycle. Now in women with endometriosis this tissue is actually outside the uterus, outside the womb, so it could be on the ovary, on the tubes or even on the bowel and so there's nowhere to shed after each month gotcha. and as a result of that it causes chronic inflammation chronic pain and this is why a lot of women are debilitated by mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's what endometriosis is it's not simply period pain yeah. a lot of women right. will suffer with period pains but it's slightly different it goes up another level so i'm sure there's going to be a lot of viewers out there now females especially that are going to be going Hang on a minute, I, I keep getting like quite bad period mm -hmm. pains. I remember when we were at school, it would always be like, let's go up the shop and get some calms or mm -hmm. whatever, your, your relief tablets yeah. and stuff like that. And they're not really working for them. So what signs should people be looking out for, mm. for them to go, hang on a minute, this might be a bit more than a few stomach cramps? So, as I mentioned, it, it can be quite debilitating. So, you would get lower, really significant lower abdominal pain, back pain. You might get pain on going to the toilet, opening your bowels, urinating. Some women may say they got discomfort during sex. Mm -hmm. It can, some women even present with infertility. So, really? yes, and uh, there are a myriad of symptoms, bloating, constipation, depending on the severity of the endometriosis. Mm -hmm. So, if you do suffer with any of those symptoms, it's important to go and see your GP yeah. or a healthcare professional. There are your red flags. I think as women, we're sort of taught almost that periods are a bit like a hangover. Do you know what I mean? In the sense of like, OK, well, you've got, you know, we'll take a tablet, quick, and you'll, be, you'll be OK. And I think that's sort of so ingrained in us that you're like, I'm ill, I don't feel well, but actually there could be a lot more to it and you really need to sort of tune into your own body. What is the long-term... Impact. I know you mentioned fertility there, but what long-term impacts are there? So, as I mentioned, it's debilitating. It can affect your day-to-day -day living. Mm. A lot of women can't go to work. They can't go to college, school. It, it affects every aspect of your day-to-day -day living. But some women 
actually present with infertility. They can't get pregnant. And that might be the first sign that they have endometriosis. Right. So it needs to be investigated. We shouldn't be just dismissive of the fact that it's a period pain. Yes. No. So it's if you suffer yeah. with any of those symptoms and it's really affecting your life, go and see your GP because sometimes healthcare professionals aren't aware and they may associate it with something else. Mm. So and obviously we know, look, go and see your GP is always the best thing to do. We're in a bit of a crisis at the minute when it yeah. comes down to the NHS. Lead times are a lot longer. Are there anything, is there anything people can do at home that think that okay. they may be suffering from endometriosis that's got an appointment in three or four weeks or however long it's taken yeah. at the moment? that could help ease those symptoms? So there are certain things. First of all, you could start off with basic pain relief. Yeah. You could start off with something like ibuprofen, paracetamol. So that would help alleviate... It depends on the severity of the symptoms. Of then the next step up would be hormonal contraception. You can get those from many pharmacies now, so you don't necessarily need to go and see your GP. So that would be the next step up, because the hormonal contraception actually stops ovulation, can make your periods much lighter, and the pain's lighter. Right. And, that will, and would that enable the, the um, non-progression of that tissue? It can slow it down. It's not going to... It's it not will, a cure. No, it's but... not a cure. But it could relieve those it symptoms. It could relieve those get. symptoms. And what about the surgery? Because I know that we talk about, and naively as well, I've got friends that are having surgery for, you know, endometriosis, but I don't actually know what it involves. What, what, what does that look like? So the surgery is done via a lapros laparoscopically. So it's camera put into the tummy and then they would look for the actual deposits of the endometriosis mm -hmm. and try to remove it, cut it out. Right. But sometimes you can't cut all of it out and it will grow back. Right. The right. Most... So if you're prone to it, it will reform it, itself. Yes. That's something you need to keep an eye on. You do. And most radically, some women actually go for a hysterectomy, total hysterectomy, mm. taking out the womb, the ovaries, and that's quite dramatic because it can put you into an early menopause. So it's not easy. There can be complications as a result of that as Honestly, well. Honestly, this is all... I, I know it's not something mm -hmm. I'm ever going to have to suffer with, but, you know, I think it's very important as well that guys out there that have got partners and things like that, you were saying it just mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. You grow up, period's a bit like a hangover. It's like, just, you know, take a couple you of paracetamol, you'll be all right, you'll but be all right. that's why a lot of people are dismissed. Sometimes yeah. people yeah. are dismissed. I had no idea. I had no yeah. idea. So well, I'd heard we the words. Be. But... We have to think twice and mm -hmm. open our eyes out a little bit and think, hold on a minute, is this something else other than period So pain? who are you yes. looking at hearing from today? So I want to hear from anyone because I know it's a common condition and women are just sort of keeping silent. So anyone who wants to talk about the pains, what the, the symptoms they might be going through, mm -hmm. we, maybe we can help. You're here. Yeah. Suggestions. Let's use you. Let's use you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very Dr. much.